Hello, Internet, and welcome to another ridiculous magic show. Today we'll be doing a booster box opening for Rivals of Ixalan. Should be fun. Uh, actually, I'm ill prepared. Did not have anything to break the seal. However, I did have this phantasmic pin that I got at Disney a while ago. We'll use that. That's fine. Alright, go ahead and get this seal. And. Mm -hmm. Alright. Go ahead and open it up there. Very nice. 36 brand new boosters from the new set. And we'll go ahead and get started. I think we'll go ahead and uh, do the first couple packs in their entirety uh, so that you can see everything. And then moving forward, we'll just do the uncommons and rares. Let's see, where do I need to hold this? Stampeding Horncrest. Raptor Companion. Now, what's interesting is they actually took some commons from the original Ixalan and reprinted them but they changed the flavor text on them. So the same characters across the two sets, uh, there's more insight into them. So it, it's, it's a little more interesting. And I guess they needed to do it for limited play. So whatever works. Start actually reading the stuff once we get to the uncommons. That's the interesting stuff. All right, Woodland Stream. Got a duel comes in tapped. Green or blue mana. A Pride of Conquerors. Ascend. If you have 10 or more permanents, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. And creatures you control have plus one, plus one until end of turn. If you have the city's blessing, they get plus two, plus two instead. Anthem Effect. It's pretty good. Uh, Golden Demise is kind of the opposite. Uh, shrinks all creatures minus two, minus two, unless you have the city's blessing. Then only your opponent's creatures get that. Deep Root Elite. Whenever another merfolk enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on target merfolk you control. It's one, one for two mana. Not bad. And Vampire Token. All right, so here we'll put the uncommons off to the side. Next pack. Alright, so Firewinder. Here, I'll do these upside down again. It's Firewinder, Arazka Raptor, Moment of Triumph, Sailor of Means, Voracious Vampire, Naturalize, Colossal Dreadmaw, Kite Sail Corsair, uh, Jade Bearer, Forsaken Sanctuary, first uncommon, Forerunner of the Legion. Here, we'll move these up here. Arterial Flow. Some discard and Sphinx's decree, not the greatest. I'm, I'm not honestly sure what deck that belongs in, if any, but it's a very interesting effect. There's not too many of them that do things like that. Uh, let's see, we'll put the green mana right there. All right. I don't pick up the pace. These uh, these videos are gonna take forever. So we're gonna go ahead and just skip right on to the uncommons. We're gonna see so many of the same commons throughout this box. It doesn't really matter. We've got strength of the pack, blazing hope. Come on now, focus, camera. Come on, camera. There we go. Focus on this card. Blazing Hope. Exile target creature with power greater than or equal to your life total. That's not bad. Uh, Cophodon, I guess? 2-5 and Rage is untap a permanent. Could be all right. Tomb Robber. Eh. I'm, I don't know about that. Three mana is kind of a lot for what it does. Got a Golem token. All right. Next pack.
right. Cherished Hatchling. Uh, if it dies, you may cast dinosaurs this turn as if they had flesh, and whenever you cast a dinosaur, the spell this turn, uh, when it enters, it fights a creature. So it's like a little baby dinosaur, and if they kill it, then the pissed off mama gets to pounce down and kill something. Which is delicious in terms of flavor. That's a great card. <laughs> well designed. Uh, Flood of Recollection. Return target instant or sorcery from graveyard to your hand. Chupacabra. This thing is a limited all star. I mean, it's just a necrotol, essentially. A little, little worse. It doesn't have first strike, but uh, being able to destroy something in limited is insane uh, while also getting the body. Uh, Brass's Bounty. For each land you control, create a treasure. Seven mana is quite a bit, but that is a lot of treasure production in one card. And we have a Foil Charging Tuscadon. 4-4 four, four, Trample. If it would deal damage to a player, it deals double damage that damage instead. That's pretty cool. Uh, put this right here. Let's keep both these uncommons. Oh, this is neat. So we also ended up with a City's Blessing token in that pack as well. So this is what you're going to end up with. Come on, camera. You're driving me crazy. This is what you're going to end up with if you get 10 permanents in play. And then as long as you have this, you can't get rid of it. You have it for the rest of the game, and it powers up quite a few cards in the set. So that's what City's Blessing is about, in case you weren't familiar with it yet. I know it's the new mechanic of the set, so we're going to a Blazing Hope. Deadeye Brawler, 2-4 uh, Death Touch Ascend. Uh, when it deals damage to a player, if I have the city's blessing, draw a card. Pretty cool. Uh, Crested Herd Caller. Makes a copy of itself when it comes in. Champion of Dusk. When it enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and lose X life, where X is the number of vampires you control. Seems like it could be good on the top end. Help you dig for whatever you need to finish the game. 4-4 four, four for 5 isn't the worst. Honestly, but it could be better, I suppose. Let's see. All right. Foul Orchard, green black duel. Aquatic Incursion. When it comes in, make two 1 1 merfolk creature tokens with hexproof. You can tap a blue and three colorless, and target merfolk cannot be blocked this turn. Pirate's Pillage uh, is an additional cost to playing it. Discard a card. You will draw two cards and create two treasures. Hoo-hoo! That's pretty nice. How about that? We got... Let me focus up on this on this camera. How about a Foil Hualti? Radiant Champion. Yay! I'm so glad I got that on camera. <laughs> Wonderful. Look at that. Beautiful. Very nice. Well, I'm going to consider this a win. Uh, we've also got a Path of Metal in there. So that was a double rare pack, one of which was our Foil Mythic. Uh, this is the Red White Legendary Enchantment. Come on, camera. Come on. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, deals one damage to each creature that does not have first strike, double strike, vigilance, or haste. When you attack with at least two creatures that have those, you will flip this da -da -da -da, oop, and rotate it, apparently, <laughs> to Metzali Tower of Triumph, which can tap for any color of mana. Uh, it can also deal two damage to each opponent with its red ability and choose a creature at random that attack this turn and destroy it with the white. So, pretty cool, but that's honestly not what we're uh, what we care about from that pack. Just one more time, let's have another look at this. Foil Hualti, my dinosaur EDH is happy. I mean, it's not even really good in the dinosaur one, but I can't not play <laughs> a foil Hualti in the dinosaur one. It's it's kind of an Ixalan tribal EDH anyway. 
got some support cards from outside the set, but lar largely most of the dinosaurs are coming from this block anyway. Anyway, moving on after that phenomenal, phenomenal pack. Uh, let's see, we've got a Reckless Rage, deals 4 damage to target creature you don't control and 2 damage to target creature you control. So you can enrage your dinosaurs with it and use it as removal. Enter the unknown, a creature you control explores and you may play an additional land this turn. It seems pretty good. 3-2 Raid Flying, uh, 4 mana blue, it's alright. Ooh, how about the Immortal Sun? Another mythic, legendary artifact with a smattering ugh, of abilities. Players can't activate Planeswalker loyalty abilities. At the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card. Spells you cast cost one less to cast, and creatures you control get plus one, plus one. This thing does it all, and it looks like Iron Man Heart. <laughs> An Iron Man Heart, so it's pretty cool. Uh, once again, lovely, lovely EDH card. I'm going to actually put this Hualti in a sleeve real quick. I probably should have done that to begin with. Ugh, pause. Ill-prepared for the video. I apologize. <laughs> That's how you know it's authentic. All right, so we got a sleeve uh, for this Hualti. Da -da -da -da. We'll keep her right up here. And we'll move on to the next pack. And we'll go to the uncommons. All right. Forerunner of the Empire. 1-3. When it comes in, you tutor a dinosaur, put it on top of your deck. Whenever a dinosaur enters, it you can have this deal one damage to each creature in play. Um, very useful combo piece with a mythic called Polyraptor, if we come across that. Um, shake the Foundation deals one damage to each creature without flying. Draw a card and raid your whole team. Uh, another Chupacabra. That's pretty cool. Uh, release to the Wind. Exile a permanent for as long as it remains exiled. Its owner may cast it without paying its mana cost. You can use this as like pseudo evasion or you can use it as temporary removal, I suppose. Moving on. I'm still on cloud nine about that whole ulti, by the way. <laughs> I can't imagine a cooler thing to have opened on the camera. All right, we got an Imperial Ceratops, Majestic Heliopetrus, these dinosaur names. Miri, go on. The cat is bothering the camera. <laughs> Majestic Helio... This is so hard to read upside down. Helio Terrace. I'm sure my brother is going to tear me up for that. He's very good with dinosaur names. Uh, Golden Demise. And how about the blue elder dinosaur? It's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. There we go. Nezahal Primal Tide. Can't be countered, no max hand size. Whenever your opponent plays a non-creature spell, you get to draw, and you can discard three to um, kind of like a long-term flicker. You exile him, and he comes back in at the next end step. So he's gone a little longer than a flicker, but you can use that to dodge you know, removal and stuff. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. No, I think I said at one point I was just going to keep all the rares in the center, but I got distracted after this Hualti, so that's off the table. Whatever. <laughs> this box opening is uh, is all all good, as long as we, we got that. Don't lose that footage. Uh, flood of Recollection. Stormfleet Sprinter. Haste can't be blocked. That's fun. Uh, Pirate's Pillage, and we've got a Jade Light Ranger for our rare. It explores twice when it comes in. Pretty neat. And on to the next pack. 
got a Mausoleum Harpy, 3-3 three, three Flying Ascend. When another creature dies, if I have the City's Blessing, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. You can see something built around that. Um, strength of the Pack. Sorry, I'm not sure if the screen went black there or not. My computer fell asleep. Uh, strength of the Pack. Put two plus one, plus one counters on each creature you control. Daring Buccaneer, 2-2 two, two for one, uh, but you have to pay an additional two unless you reveal a pirate. And a Protean Raider, Shapeshifter, three mana uh, if you raid. Got one of those in the uh, online draft that I did as well. Haven't actually recorded any of the gameplay for that yet, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. All right, Uncommons. Imperial Ceratops, Enrage, you gain two life. Relentless Raptor, attacks or blocks each combat if able, but it's a 3-3 Vigilance for two, so you know, it's pretty good. 2-2 uh, Haste can't be blocked. Stormfleet Sprinter. And Dire Fleet Daredevil. Uh, this one's pretty interesting. I was hoping I would get one of these. Um, it has been compared to um, Snapcaster Mage in a way. It's not nearly as flexible. It's got First Strike instead of Flash. And you have to play the instant or sorcery from an opponent's graveyard instead of your own. So it's a little harder to set up. But I, I still think that this could be good, especially if your deck didn't have access to blue anyway, but you'd like that effect. Because most of the time, if you're playing this in modern or something, people are going to be playing good spells that you don't mind copying anyway, even if they're not necessarily ones that you chose yourself or set up yourself. Obviously, snappy is better if you're playing control, but at the same time, I see being able to have a 2-1 first strike for two mana and then use an opponent's thought seize on themselves. That sounds pretty good. Anywho. Stone Quarry, Red White Duel. Swift Warden, 3-3 uh, three, three Flash when it enters. Target Merfolk you control gains Hexproof until end of turn. Can fizzle a removal spell. Uh, whenever Raging Registar attacks, it gets it deals one damage to target creature or player, so it gets to ping stuff. It can hit other dinosaurs to trigger their enrage again. That seems pretty good. Mastermind's Acquisition. This card's pretty interesting. Uh, choose one, search your library for a card, and put it into your hand. Or choose a card you own from outside the game and put it into your hand. Now, in a tournament setting, that just means your sideboard. But in casual, you could, I don't know, you could talk to your playgroup. Can you hang on a second? I got a binder I want to flip through real quick. Just go pick it, whatever you want. Super fun for casual. Uh, could see constructive play if they need a tutor and uh, need to protect their win conditions from uh, strip searches. But uh, curious obsession, plus one, plus one, and whenever it deals damage to a player, you may draw a card. At the beginning of your end step, if you didn't attack with a creature this turn, you have to sacrifice curious obsession. Eh. Not bad, I suppose. C red, plus two, plus one as first strike at the beginning of your end step if you didn't attack with a creature this turn, sacrifice C red. These enchantments really pushing the raid mechanic. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, two, two for three, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to ever dawn champion. It's pretty cool. Radiant destiny, three mana, ascend. When it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control the chosen type get plus one, plus one. Also, if you have the city's blessing, they get vigilance. And we've got a random foil little merfolk. So here's the rare, Radiant Destiny. Um, probably one of the better ascend cards if you're going to end up in some kind of white tribal based. If you're playing vampires or something. Uh, giving them all plus one, plus one and vigilance is pretty good. And then our foil. Greens look good in foil. All right. On to the next pick. I don't want this video to be too, too long. Do, 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 do. All right. Horn Swoggle. Counter a creature and get a treasure for three mana. Not terrible. Storm Swoggle. Fleet Wash Buckler. I can't talk tonight, my goodness. 2-2 two, two Ascend. Uh, it has Double Strike if you have the City's Blessing. Expel for Morazka. 2 mana Ascend Instant. Return a permanent to its owner's hand. If you have the City's Blessing, put it on top of their library instead. That's actually, that seems pretty strong. 
Uh, we got a Rekindling Phoenix is another mythic. Not a great mythic, but it's one of the better phoenixes to come out as of late. Uh, four mana, four three flying. If it dies, you get a zero one red elemental creature token with sacrifice this creature and return a card named rekindling phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield it gained haste until end of turn so as long as they don't actually have a way to ping the uh elemental then this thing's going to just keep coming back four three flying that demands exile to get rid of is not terrible certainly no <laughs> foil kowalti though why is she not in the frame more she just deserves her own spot On to the next pack. All right, we got Woodland Stream. Forerunner of the Heralds. This is the Merfolk Forerunner. Uh, so it can tutor for a Merfolk, put it on top of your deck. Uh, whenever another Merfolk enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on Forerunner of the Heralds. So, grows bigger, tutors up another Merfolk. Uh, nice, we got the Red Elder Dinosaur. So we've got the blue one and the red one so far. Uh, six, six for six. When it attacks, ex uh, exile the top card of each player's library. You may cast any number of non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. Super fun in uh, EDH when you have a four-player game going on. That's a big swing. All right, how's about... We look at Riverwise Augur. When it comes in, draw three, then put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. Be good with fetches and stuff. Uh, Arterial Flow, discard and bleed if you have vampires. Two, five, untap things when it enrages. And Paladin of Atonement, beginning of each upkeep if you lost life that turn. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and when it dies, you gain life equal to the toughness. I'm going to try to speed up. I'm looking over and notice I'm at 22 minutes already. Goodness. Uh, here we go. Forerunner of the Legion. The Vampire Forerunner. Tutors one up whenever another Vampire comes in. Uh, your team gets plus... No, just target creature. One creature gets plus one, plus one. Doesn't seem like it'd be that much, but when you're flopping a lot of Vampires into play at once, uh, it can be the difference in math that you need to get in. Uh, Jungle Creeper... 3-3 three, three for 3, you can pay 5 to return it from your graveyard to your hand. Dire Fleet Nutbreaker, 3-2, attacking pirates you control, get plus 2, plus 0. Oh. Dire Fleet Poisoner, 2-mana, uh, 2-2, two, two, flash, death touch, when it enters the battlefield and a pirate you control gets plus 1, plus 1, and gains death touch until end of the turn. I think it's one of the better pirates in the set, truth be told. I really like that one. I just like flash and death touch together as a mechanic in general. It's very strong. And foil sun crested pterodon. Next pack. On to the uncommons. Enter the unknown. Explore and play an additional land, shake the foundations, ping all your dudes, trigger and rage. Everdon champion can't be hit. Form of the dinosaur. Advertisement for Magic Minecraft. Interesting. Form of the dinosaur. When it enters the battlefield, my life total becomes 15. At the beginning of my upkeep, it deals 15 damage to target creature and opponent controls, and that creature deals damage equal to its power to you. So if you can find a way to flicker that, you can keep resetting your life total to 15, and then you have repeatable removal as long as uh, you're confident that they're not going to kill you in the fight, which I can't imagine what you're really fighting. I don't think you're fighting Emrakul with uh, Form of the Dinosaur, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, we've got a Sky Marcher Aspirant. 2-1 uh, Ascend has flying if you have the City's Blessing. Early aggro drop, and then can be an evasive threat late game. Comes down to it. Needle Tooth Raptor 2 2 and Rage. When it is dealt damage, it deals 5 damage to target creature and opponent control, so it's removal on a little bear body. Reaver Ambush, exile a creature with power 3 or less. Uh, Wayward Sword Tooth 5 5 Ascend uh, for 3 mana. Pretty cool. Um, 
You may play an additional land on each of your turns, and it can't attack or block unless you have the city's blessing. So I actually really like this card quite a bit. Um, just the ability to play extra lands is going to ramp you to city's blessing anyway, and it can still crew things, and vehicles are still very much a thing. So I'm toying the, with the idea of maybe building something in standard around uh, ramping lands and playing vehicles. But we'll see how that goes. All right, Sky Marcher Aspirant again. Cool, Curious Obsession. Forerunner of the Coalition. We got the Pirate one. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, we got the Pirate one. Y'all saw that. Uh, whenever another pirate enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. This just will not focus for nothing. Nothing. But yes, we got Engraph as well. And a foil Siren Reaver as well. That's an uncommon. Not, not terrible. Uh, Angrath, Flame Chained. Five mana comes in with... Where am I at here? Four loyalty, plus one. Each opponent discards a card and loses two life. Minus three. Gain control of a creature until end of turn. Untap it against haste. Sacrifice it beginning the next end step if it is three or less converted mana cost. So you kill their dudes and get to hit them with them, or just hit them with them if they are bigger than uh, converted mana cost, three or less. But a repeatable threat and effect is pretty good. And the fact that you're actually stripping their hand and attacking their life total by gaining loyalty means Engrath could actually be pretty good in a pretty removal-heavy red-black kind of deck, I think. Well, very nice. Two Planeswalkers, one of which was Foil. Still blown away by that. That's uh, that's one of my best pulls in a very long time. Probably since I pulled Expeditions back in Zendikar days. At Zakinseer, taps for one man of any color. Uh, two, three, four, three mana. You can sacrifice it to return a dinosaur from the graveyard to your hand. Uh, Pride of Conquerors, this is the Ascend one that pumps up your team. Reaver Ambush, exile a creature with power three or less. Um, Journey to Eternity is our rare. This is fun. So three mana, put it on a creature. If that creature dies, come on, geez Louise. If that creature dies, return it to the battlefield under your control and then return this as Atzel, Cave of Eternity. Taps for one mana of any color. You can tap five mana, a black, a green, and three uh, to return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Having that effect every turn is pretty strong. Gives you a nice inevitability. So another YouTube channel uh, posted a nice series of videos involving that card. and excited for it. It looks like fun. Uh, Highland Lake. Red, blue, dual. C red, plus two, plus one. First strike has to be attacking or the enchantment dies. Raging Registrar pings things. Awaken Amalgam. I think it's literally just a walking trash can. Uh, it's really bad. <laughs> Power toughness equal to the number of differently named lands you control. Eh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know really what to say about that one. I guess you could try it in like one of the uh, Guildgate decks, Mazes End decks. <laughs> Pretty interesting. All right. Uh, Forerunner of the Legion, Vampire Tutor. Uh, Thrashing Brontodon, 3 4, tap 1, sacrifice it, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Resplendent Griffin, 2 2, Flying Ascend. When it attacks, if you have the city's blessing, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Woohoo! There's Zakama. Primal Calamity. We're doing pretty good with our mythics, honestly. Um, so, yeah, big old three headed dinosaur. 9 9 Vigilance Reach Trample. If you cast it, untap all your lands after you play it. And then it's got three super useful abilities across its colors. Uh, just really cool. I think I'm still going to keep um, my. Other dinosaur, general, quality, not quality. That's the planeswalker. Uh, Gisha. <laughs> but 
it's pretty cool. <laughs> Three-headed dinosaurs are uh, definitely a little head-turning. We got Thunderherd Migration, Sadistic Sky Marcher, 2-2, two, two, uh, Reveal a Vampire or Pay 1, Flying Lifelink for 3 mana. That's pretty good. Swift Warden, that's the one that gives Hexproof. You got Tenderfoot Dryad, 2-2, two, two, Ascend. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a Sapperling creature token. Sapperlings you control have plus 2, plus 2, as long as you have the City's Blessing. Very nice. And that artwork's pretty pretty awesome. Just the, the lore of this set is so ridiculous. <laughs> I love it. Pirates and dinosaurs and everybody's in a giant battle over treasure. Phenomenal. Alright. Reckless Rage. Four damage to a creature you don't control and two to one you do. Siren Reaver. Pride of Conquerors, and we got Path of Discovery. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it explores. So that's pretty good. Helps you dig through your deck, get all your lands out of the way. Beefs up your dudes if uh, you don't find the lands. Cool. And here we go. Highland Lake. Forerunner of the Heralds. Baffling End. When it enters, exile target creature and opponent controls with converted mana cost three or less. If Baffling End leaves the battlefield, they get a 3-3 dinosaur token with Trample. Uh, Tulanali's Summoner. Two mana, 1-1 one, one Ascend. When it attacks, you may pay red and X. If you do create X, 1-1... One, one, bless you. Uh, red elemental creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. At the beginning of your next end step, exile those tokens unless you have the city's blessing. So this thing can just crank out tokens late game or just go really wide early. I mean, it only costs two mana, but it could be an interesting payoff kind of card for, you know, the one that flips into Talarian Academy. Uh, let's see. Thunderherd Migration. Aquatic Incursion, Pirate's Pillage, ooh, nice. We got our second copy of <laughs> Nezahal. So we got two of the Blue Elder Dinosaurs, and we also got the emblem for our Foil of Walti. We're full on bling in here. Da, 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 da. Let's keep this going. Oh my gosh, 32 minutes. Speed up. Never gonna make it on the, on the tubes. Hornswoggle, Pitiless Plunderer, Famished Paladin, and another Paladin of Atonement. I believe that's our second one in this box. Moving on, we got Slippery Scoundrel. Ascend, if you have the City's Blessing, it has Hexproof and can't be blocked. This thing is actually awesome and limited. I got one in my draft and it was awesome. Uh, Oathsworn Vampire, 2-2 two -two enters tapped. Um, you may cast it from your graveyard if you gain life this turn. Here's our first silver gill adept. That's pretty good. 2-1, uh, reveal a merfolk from your hand or pay 3 when it comes in for 2. And uh, when it enters, draw a card, which is pretty awesome. Seafloor Oracle, 4 mana, 2-3. When a merfolk you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Interesting. Uh, keep it going. I think we got about 6 packs left. Man, all right. We got the Atskin Seer, Thrashing Brontodon, Resplendent Griffin, and another Tender Shoot Dryad. That's number two for the box. All right. Slippery Scoundrel, Stormfleet Swashbuckler, Resplendent Griffin. Whoops, wrong pop. <laughs> and Kumina's Awakening. Ascend. Uh, it's a Howling Mine for four mana. Uh, each player draws a card on your upkeep, although if you have the City's Blessing, you're the only one that gets to draw a card. So it's you drawing extra cards each turn, your opponent not. Gets pretty out of hand. Uh, Merfolk Mistbinder. The Merfolk Two Mana Lord. I think that's only the first one in the box we've seen. Uh, Mausoleum Harpy. 3-3 three, three Flying Ascend. When another creature you control dies, City's Blessing. Oh, that, that one. I remember now. Aquatic Incursion. We got a Silent Gravestone. Cards in graveyards cannot be the target of spells or abilities. Tap 4 and it. Exile Silent Gravestone and all cards in all graveyards. Draw a card. 
Interesting. Uh, Spire Winder as a foil. Let me quick look at that. Yep. It's a snake with wings, apparently. <laughs> Whatever. All right, getting down toward the end of this box. Thanks for sticking with me if you have so far. Oop, come on, computer. Don't go to sleep. I know it's late. All right, Jungle Creeper, Foul Orchard, Needletooth Raptor, it's one that shoots stuff. Another Sphinx's Decree. Ugh. That's definitely one we didn't want two of in the box, but whatever. Maybe it turns out to be amazing down the line, and I'll be glad I have them, but I'm not so sure about that. Stone Quarry, Majestic Helioteris, Sadistic Sky Marcher, ooh, Foil Path of Discovery. That's pretty cool. It's the one when the cre ooh, and here's an Azur's Gateway. Let's keep the mythics going. Uh, two mana, tap one in it, draw a card, then exile a card from your hand. If cards with five or more different converted mana costs are exiled with Azur's Gateway, you gain five life, untap Azur's Gateway, and transform it. And it transforms into Sanctum of the Sun, a legendary land that says tap to add X mana of any one color to your mana pool where X is your life total. If you manage to actually flip this thing around, I think you pretty much just win the game. It's hard to imagine you can't win with that much mana. Like, your, your deck should be able to do whatever it was trying to do by the time you flip that. And let's see. We got Sky Marcher, Aspirant, Riverwise, Augur, another Chupacabra, nice. Uh, Arch of Razka, that's pretty cool. Foil Dusk Legion Zealot, nice, nice, nice. Good way to end out the box. Uh, Arch of Razka, taps for colorless, tap five and it to draw a card. Activate this only if you have the City's Blessing. And Dusk Legion Zealot, um, draw a card and lose a life when it comes in. Two mana, one, one. It's a decent common, honestly. I'd play it in Vampires. So that was a uh, ridiculous magic box opening, and boy, howdy was it. Also, by the way, I should probably mention, I don't think I did at the beginning of this, if you buy the box from your local game store, you end up with one of these super sweet, uh, it's going to focus, buy a box promos, and it is... Whoop, Captain's Hook. Plus two plus zero has menace as a pirate in addition to its other types. When it becomes unattached from a permanent, destroy that permanent. So they lose the hook, they uh, they die. They probably walk the plank. But so you'll get that promo if you buy a box from your LGS instead of the internet. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. And this is Trevor and his new foil Hualti signing out. Thanks for watching.